Turbo jet engines are pretty cool, and you see them everywhere nowadays. Well, not exactly. First of all, those big round things you see on commercial airliners, those aren't turbojet engines, but it's their younger brother, the turbofan engine. And second of all, you won't see them everywhere. It's not like you have one in your garage. But you may have one in your living room, if you're me, because I made one. Now, why, you ask? Well, I think jet engines are pretty cool. It's like the four steps of combustion in your car, but then you make it all happen at the same time. For the longest time, I wanted a real working model of one, not just a toy. And also, I want to become an aeronautical engineer, and this project will teach me what it takes to make a jet engine, and also what to consider when making it. Now, before I go on to how I made my model, I'll just go through some background information. So you'll remember me saying turbojet engines are a thing of the past and are now replaced by turbofan engines. Here's how you can tell the difference. So turbojet engines are the four stages of combustion and 100% of the thrust comes from those exhaust gases. Think of it like a motor. Now turbofan engines is like if you took that motor and you strapped a big fan onto it. I'm talking a fan with an area of about four times the area of the engine itself. The reason why we do that is because it increases efficiency and reliability. I could go into more details about how it works, but essentially what happens is it reduces fuel consumption and it also lets us do long haul fights. The way the turbojet engine works is quite simple. Uh, there's the suck, squeeze, bang, and blow. The impeller does the sucking, the compressor compresses the air, the fuel bangs in the combustion chamber, and the turbines blow the exhaust gases, and this maintains the self-sustaining cycle. I wish I could say I use stuff like CAD modeling and CNC and like welding and stuff, but that's quite literally impossible here. We can't even weld a part here because nobody does aluminum welding. So you can say I've done this project from a very, very heavy handicap here. Uh, so this engine that I've made is only made from a tin of wafers, popsicle sticks, and a bottle of water my friend gave me. And all of these parts are held together either by like nuts and bolts, super glue, or like tons of steel epoxy. So it's nowhere near as precise as it should be for it to be an operational engine or reliable in that sense. And that was shown by the first one, as you can see. Now, I don't even know why it went wrong. I still don't know why. It's kind of confusing at this point. So, after the damage, I just opened it up and I saw that the, the bearing on the front just fell off the place, like it snapped off place. And then the gas just leaked backwards. I assumed the pipe fell off. Not too sure how it fell off, but the pipe just fell back. And that caused my stator to burn. So, in the first design, I used an old 3D printed propeller that I had for one of my IAs, my IB internal assessments. And then, but then that melted because heat and plastic, it makes it melt. And then, so the second time I did it, I had to replace the stator with something I had, which was popsicle sticks that I hot glued to a bearing. It, it also failed, but it's not as bad as I thought it would. And I do know why it went wrong. So what happened is, one of the compressor blades smashed itself with the stator. Not only did it deform that compressor blade, it shredded like half of the blades and that caused the broken pieces to ricochet itself into the engine and it just clogged it. Okay. 
The last time I tried it was mildly infuriating. It still didn't work, by the way, but at least I know why it didn't work. And it is something I fixed. So what happened was the fuel line kept popping off as the engine built up heat and as it approached the conditions where it can start self-sustaining. The pressure was just too high and the line just popped away. I even used steel epoxy to hold it in place, but that didn't work. So I really have to change my whole design here to um, make it withstand that pressure. So that's as far as I can go with the amount of time I have. Um, after the IB exams finish, I'll try to fix what I have or maybe start another one from scratch. Uh, clearly, the problem is that the tolerances of my pieces are really bad and that there's just a couple poor design choices I made. So, the, like stuff like the fuel lines and the number of pr propellers and stators and perhaps the entire design of the combustion chamber will have to be changed. So, yeah, in the near future, maybe after like two or three weeks, I'll get back to this. But uh, that's some improvements for the future. So I'll see you guys later when I um, get back or finish those. Uh, we'll see what happens.